Yeah. So everyone watching, before you take your Irish sea moss and your spirulina and your fucking all these seaweeds, think about that just for a second. So today, we, me and my boo, Jess and Bree Bree, we are going to be talking about a really cool topic. I think Jessica came up with this, and I love it. I want to write a whole book on this. So like, maybe one day. So basically, we're going to talk about what not to do. So Jess, can you introduce the topic? And you go first. I love this topic. Absolutely. I am excited about this one, too. Okay, so it's basically health traps. So it's things that you do not want to do. It's things you want to avoid. It's things that are presented out into the world as healthy, but they are not. So they're tricks. Don't fall for them. We are here to save you. Okay. My first thing is pink coconut water. This is packaged as something beautiful, as something desirable. You will see it on the shelf in a clear bottle, and it will be visibly pink. And people will actually tell you that it's better when it's pink. It's not. It's expired. Do not buy it. You only want to drink white coconut water. In fact, you only want to drink coconut water out of a coconut if that's possible. If not, sure, buy coconut water in a container and uh, just make sure the ingredients are only coconut water. Organic, preferably. Uh, So, yes, avoid pink coconut water. Um, the next big one I'm going to cover in depth, and then I'm going to list off a bunch that, um, that you should just be aware of. So my next one is going to be vinegar, apple cider vinegar included. And I know people are going to come for me for this one because there are so many health influencers out there using it all over the place in every recipe and every salad dressing saying that it helps with digestion, it helps with this, it helps with that. It actually does more harm than good. Um, This is any kind of vinegar. So balsamic vinegar, white vinegar, rice vinegar, red wine vinegar, malt vinegar, pickles, vinaigrettes. Like I said, apple cider vinegar. Preserves poisons. It allows them to go deeper into the cells, into the organs, the glands, and the connective tissue. So it's basically like a preservative. It dehydrates the body on a deep organ level. It pickles the organs. It erodes the teeth and it works against your healing. So do without the vinegar. Use some lemon. Use some whatever else for your dressing. Just leave out the vinegar. Then I'm going to list off some other things to just be aware of and look out for. Aspartame and other artificial sweeteners. Citric acid, formaldehyde. MSG, natural and artificial flavors, nutritional yeast, preservatives, and alcohol, of course. Okay, I did not understand the assignment. So my list is totally different. That was phenomenal. I have some questions. Um, That was really fucking good. Wow. I like a dude, this should be a book. We should write a book. Because yeah, well, okay, my question, first off, why do people think that apple cider vinegar is different than vinegar? I mean, I get it because I guess they think it's from apples. So it's more of a naturally derived. But where? what is your source of this information? Because so many people are thinking that this is a health food. Even raw vegans are putting it in their salad dressing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think apple cider vinegar is presented as like a holy grail, like health item because of the apple part. Um, but even though, okay, apple cider vinegar is the healthiest of the vinegars. So if you're going to have one, regardless of what I'm saying, do have apple cider vinegar. But just know that it's still pickling your organs and it's still dehydrating you and it's still eroding your teeth from the inside out. Um, what was the second part to that? Um, what is your source oh. of information? Yes. Okay. So this comes from medical medium originally, but you will find a lot of other reputable people talking about this now. Yeah. Thank you. Cause there's this guy, Dr. Paul Bragg, who really made, um, I think apple cider vinegar, very popular. 
I think it was him, right? Um, I think it was, and basically touted it as a health food. But in my opinion, guys, I think, and you know what I stand for, it's what you don't eat that heals you. I think that what happened with the Paul Bragg diet and apple cider vinegar, it's like people were told to take that, but also eliminate things from their diet that were very harmful. Okay, fried foods, processed foods, junk food, all this crap. And so it's like, yeah, if you take apple cider vinegar, but you eliminate all the things that are very bad for you, you're going to have a great result. It's what you don't eat that heals you. I will live, I live and die by that. Um, and apples are great, but like, yeah, um, there is nothing apple-like about apple cider vinegar, really. And apple cider vinegar can last for like ever, forever. An apple should not last forever, which by the way, I know there are some that last forever because they're sprayed with the wax and all this stuff, but fruit, fresh food should go bad quickly. Okay. Cause you know, if it can't go bad quickly, then it already went bad. So apple cider vinegar, I'm on the same page with you. It's gross. It tastes gross. You were going to say Jess. And you know what vinegar is good for? Cleaning. <laughs> yes. Cleaning. Yeah. Same with soda, Coca-Cola. You know what it's great for pouring down your sink. Yeah. I, yeah. Apple cider vinegar and soda are the same thing. Okay. Yeah. I agree. So Brianna, thank you, Jess. That was phenomenal. I took notes and I loved it. Brie, you are next. I don't know if you understood the assignment. I didn't, uh, but let's see what you have written down. I know. I was going to say that <laughs> I, I just love our brains because I know that we thought about different things and we still practice some of the same things. Um, I just want to touch on, yes, Coca-Cola goes down the drain. I used to clean pennies with Coca-Cola. Like I used to collect them because I wanted to see the year when I was younger and I used to clean it with Coca-Cola and they would like get all clean and everything. So disgusting. I definitely fell um, just everybody. We're all human. So we will fall for these tricks. So don't be hard on yourself. I want to say that like I fell for the apple cider vinegar. I didn't even know you had to do like when people were taking shots, do not do that at all. I was taking shots and bigger than I was supposed to. And I didn't even dilute it. So I was drinking like this much of apple cider vinegar. And I to the, that too. yes. And I can't even like, every time I smell it now, I just gag. Cause I remember just like doing it. Cause I'm like, Oh, I'm going to lose weight. Like it's gonna, it's gonna make me like, it's going to be good in the end. No, horrible. Didn't change anything. <laughs> so I kind of did it a little bit different, like this assignment. So for the first one that I have for a health trap are, and this is not popular, but it's juice fast. Um, I already least. know that was my first one. You know that, right? <laughs> you know, you know what? I need to go next because she's going to stake. She's going to steal all my stuff because we we think the same. So I'm going to mute myself, but you you already have my whole list. Goodbye. I already knew it, but okay. So you'll touch more upon juice fast, but I'm for extended juice fast. Like if you want to do a day or two, like I don't think it's necessary, but I have done an extended juice fast. I've lost 15 pounds after I ate regular for a week. I've gained 15 pounds back. So I don't recommend it. I think it's, Especially if you are an emotional eater, it's definitely not good for you. But if you want to, I just recommend putting more juices into your life every single day. Um, I think one of the traps is, and this is like just health in general. It doesn't have to do with food, but it's no days off of exercise. Usually people want to like get healthy faster and lose weight faster. They think that they have to exercise every single day and go hard every single day. And I truly believe that you need a rest day, even if it's like an active rest day, just like walk, going for a walk, but very, very light, but your body needs to rest and needs to recover. And you're only hurting yourself and you're more liable for energy injuries. If you're exercising every single day, going hard. Uh, another one for me is pre-made juices. I definitely fell for this. Um, the fake it, you know, that one that's on the shelf, <laughs> turn it around and look at the ingredients and there's nothing natural about it. 
like I, when I was, I try to be more convenient. And when I was getting into juices years ago, then I was buying that stuff. And until I seen somebody say, look at the ingredients and it's not worth it. Like just take the time. It's self-love to juice your own vegetables. Don't buy it at the store. And I'm going to hold off on the rest because I know, <laughs> I know Jeanette's, <laughs> I know you have a lot more and they're probably the same anyways. I know it. Yeah, I know you um, and I have the same list, but I actually wanted to I wrote something down because Jessica inspired me. So I have three things, not what not to do, but Jessica inspired me because now I'm thinking about ingredients and in a lot of raw foods in a lot of health foods at the health food store is the word natural flavors. And it Jessica talked about it. And this is so important because that term natural flavors it seems so innocent. It's like the citric acid. We think it's lemons or oranges. Meanwhile, they would write lemons or oranges if it was. Okay. Now with natural flavors. Okay. And this is going to be very disturbing to a lot of you guys because it's in a lot of health products, but it is common practice to put oh, pig anal juice into fake vanilla flavors. Okay. And what did they list it as? Natural flavors. So the reason they don't put a vanilla extract is because that's very expensive. Vanilla bean, very expensive. So instead they put pig anal juice and that's totally legal. Do not buy anything from today on that says natural flavors. Natural flavors is an umbrella term and that can mean up to a hundred different ingredients. And that could be vegan not vegan, that can be chemicals, that can be, I mean, the FDA says it has to be from a living source. Natural flavors has to be from a living source, all 100 ingredients. So like, it's not guaranteed that it's vegan. Also, I mean, it is just not guaranteed that it is even healthy. I mean, like, there is nothing natural about natural flavors. And to be honest, it makes me really want to start like fighting against the the Food and Drug Administration, which I feel like is a losing battle, but this should not be legal. This term should not be legal. Um, so I just wanted you guys to know that. And a, a friend of mine told me last night in my course, okay, a new friend of mine. So yeah, really disgusting. Um, and um, I saw yesterday Bob's Red Mill Granola, which is a super healthy brand. It's organic, <laughs> okay? It had natural flavors in it. That is a number one no-no for me. I don't care if it's raw. I don't care if it's organic, gluten-free, all the, all the things. Don't buy it if it says natural flavors. You don't know what the hell you're eating. All right. So my three things that I wrote down about what not to do is number one, don't intermittent fast. Number two, don't ever in your life go on a juice cleanse or a water fast. And number three, don't try to eat no overt fat. I'm not going to go into too much detail on these three things because I, I feel like I've, I've done a lot of content on these three. But these three backfired on me personally, okay? Trying to do intermittent fasting um, in an unrealistic way did not work for me as a former food addict, as someone who was overweight, as someone who eats emotionally, as someone who um, like just goes to the extremes. So I tried to do four-hour eating windows. I tried to do six-hour eating windows. I tried to do eight-hour eating windows. And sometimes you're too busy. Sometimes you have work, long days of work. Sometimes you're traveling and, you know, if I, if I say I'm going to stop eating at a certain time, but then I haven't eaten, um, what happens is I will starve. Okay. I will go to bed without eating. And then the next day I will be ravenous and I will eat so much more. And you do this for a few days and you don't feel good. You get really bloated. You eat way too much. And maybe most likely you're going to eat things that you shouldn't even eat. I have clients that constantly do this to themselves. They starve themselves and they break down and they go to a vending machine or they, you know, they eat something unhealthy because they just push their bodies to the limit. I highly recommend you do not do intermittent fasting. Highly rec If you're eating processed foods, I highly recommend you do not intermittent fast. Let's get off the processed foods first. Eat as much fruit, vegetables, nuts, and seeds as you like. Eat as much healthy foods as you'd like. And then we'll talk about intermittent fasting in five years. No joke. Okay. Number two, because if you're struggling with food, 
you should not be worried about the time frame. You got to get off the processed addiction, the processed foods. Number two, juice cleansing or water fasting. Terrible idea. Fastest way to fall off your diet, your healthy, consistent diet is to do a fast. It's a terrible idea. Everyone has, I mean, most of my clients, they're coming from a place where they tried to do the juice cleanse. They tried to do the water fasting. They tried to restrict and they just fell off over and over and over again. Okay. It's a very rare person out there that can do fasting and stick to a healthy raw vegan diet afterwards. It's very rare. And I don't know one person that can do it. And number three is don't try to eat no overt fat. This is controversial because, you know, you have the John McDougal's and the chef AJ's and the people out there that don't eat any overt fat. I think medical medium might be against fat as well. Jess, is that true? I'm not, I, I'm not very familiar. Yes and no. I mean, he's not completely against it, but his information is why I avoided it for so long, but I avoided it for too long. He doesn't really say to never eat it, but he does advise um, because he's talking to the general population and most people do just eat fat all day long. So most people could use a period of time being completely fat free um, or at least in the morning, you know, like he, he supports eating fruit for breakfast and not having overt fats until lunch or until dinner. So that's the main message, I think. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think that's really important to not have fat for breakfast um, because you're in the cleansing phase until 11 a.m. So I do agree with that. I think it's a big mistake for you to go raw and and or high carb, low fat and do completely no fat, no avocado no nuts or seeds, no coconut meat, um, just like completely fat free. Because what happens is the truth is, is that fat is very satiating and fruit is lots of water. Fruit, especially the watery fruits, the watermelons, the grapes, the oranges, they're not very filling. You're going to have to eat a lot of it. And you'll honestly, you're not going to be super satisfied the whole day if you just eat fruit. I don't know exactly what's going on out there with the people that are doing the, you know, 30 days on fruit only, 100 days on watermelon only. Uh, You know, I love watermelon. I think this is a terrible idea. I'm telling you right now, there are so many people that are going to fall off and blame themselves and go back to eating processed foods and animal body parts because they just were not satisfied. Um, To be satisfied as a woman, because I can only speak as a woman, I need to eat some fat some seeds, some hemp seeds, some avocado, flax seeds, um, you know, just some type of overt fat in my personal experience on a long-term raw vegan diet. That's just my experience. Okay. I also, I see the difference in my skin, hair, and nails when I don't eat fat at all. I think as a woman, we need to eat some overt fats. That's my personal opinion. Last thing I want to say real quick is that the vitamin industry, the supplements, the powders, the potions, the lotions, I'm really against it. I'm really, really against supplementation unless you have tried everything else. You are deficient. You've gotten a blood test. You've tried every natural way to supplement. And then if you want to give it a given and take a supplement, fine. But I am super against supplements, vitamins, powders, anything that is dead that's sitting on a shelf because it just doesn't make any sense. You want to feel alive. And I know I know that you guys might disagree the people on the zoom, (laughs) but here's the thing. And we can talk about it. Tell me why you think that's alive. Because if something is sitting on a shelf, not getting moldy, how could that possibly help us with our health? Our goal is to feel alive and look alive, right? How can a dead supplement, something that sits on a shelf in a warehouse for years and years and years, possibly be alive with vital nutrition? I just don't understand it. I will never take a supplement as long as I live. If I'm deficient, I will find a way to get a living version of that. So let me give you an example. If I become B12 deficient, which I am not after 13 years eating raw, if I become B12 deficient, I will find natural, alive, healthy B12 um, products. For example, alfalfa sprouts are high in B12, barley grass juice powder, which is a powder, but at least it's not a B12 supplement, which just like the barley grass juice powder, it will go bad. The supplements will never go bad, ever, ever. I have seen barley grass juice powder form mold on it. So in my opinion, it's a little bit more alive uh, than a supplement, but ultimately I will try to do it with sprouts 
and with getting grounding more, um, which helps change your microbiome and affects your B12, I will, I will personally find more healthier ways to supplement. Do you have anything to say about that, Jess? <laughs> it's funny that you ask me because you know that I do take some supplements sometimes. So I go through different phases. Um, I do have a different viewpoint on supplements. And to answer your question is, you know, if it's sitting on a shelf. It's not alive. How are you going to put this in your body? How are you going to get any nutrients from it if it's dead? And um, I think that's where studies and the science come into play, which I don't spend a significant amount of time on. But I know there are different studies that prove and that's how they end up, you know, creating these supplements and marketing them is they do a study and they show that it's bioavailable and that it, our bodies do in fact absorb the nutrients from it. Um, I actually have supplements sitting right here that I'm like now looking, do they, do they expire? And they do have an expiration date. Um, I think we'll be talking about this in a different episode. We'll get into, um, I'll talk about my supplements a little bit more um, when I do use them, but there are certain brands. I mean, there's certain qualities you I think you're better off not having them at all than having them and not knowing where they came from. And because most of them, it's a dirty industry. The supplement industry is very dirty. Um, it just like how Jeanette was talking about natural flavors and how it's an umbrella term and all these things can go under it. Um, with supplements, they're allowed like a percentage of heavy metals. They're allowed a percentage of different things that we don't want in our bodies. And a lot of them cut corners and a lot of them aren't transparent. And so you really have to trust the source of the supplements and you have to know what you're looking for. And, um, yeah, so most brands out there are not going to be safe. Yeah. I once read from, it was an article by someone who used to work in the supplement industry and he says that there are only expiration dates on supplements so that you feel better about it. Think about it. Twinkies, we know they last forever. But there's an expiration date on Twinkies. It's two years. But they last. They've been proven to last forever, forever. So the same with supplements. There is not an expiration date. Yeah, man-made. Man put an expiration date on there. But see, with an apple or an orange or a banana, man doesn't need to put an expiration date on there because you will see that it goes bad. You see? So like, I just don't trust the Food and Drug Administration, which is where vitamins and minerals and supplements come from. Uh, I don't trust man's work. I trust nature. Um, I truly believe that supplements are created only for profit. I truly believe it. And nature is what I trust because nature didn't just create fruit and vegetables for profit. They created it like they, the universe created fruit and vegetables for us to be healthy and alive. Um, I just, I fell for it for so long before I went raw. I was like, I was so into supplements and vitamins. GNC was like my whole foods back then. Cause you know, there wasn't whole foods when I was growing up. GNC was like the place that I hung out. Okay. And I just took everything and I took biotin for my hair. Um, I took, you know, all these different supplements, all the vitamins, all the minerals. I truly believed in it because I was brainwashed. And now I feel very strongly against it. It just doesn't make any sense. I personally don't even like these like natural things. I mean, these powders, the maca powder, the ashwagandha powders, the powders that just I don't take them. I don't believe in them. I don't take them. They just don't make any sense to me as somebody eating a raw food diet. You know, it's just like everything I'm eating is living. Then I'm going to take this powder. It's going to help me. It's just getting in the way of digestion, um, causing gas and bloating. And um, yeah, that's my personal view on that. I, I like to think that, um, well, okay. I think I have a little bit more faith in humanity because I like to think that the, that us on this call are there's other people like us out there is what I'm trying to say. And those are the people that have said, okay, I'm going to make one that's clean. I'm going to make, I'm going to make one that's healthy and that people can take and feel good about with clean ingredients. And they're the ones behind some of the, the companies out there that have created supplements and we can trust them. It's just a matter of finding them. I think a lot of them are smaller, but um, for instance, spirulina, 
I, I really think that that's a great greens powder, but you have to get one that's clean. And um, I, I was not, I happen to have these right next to me. These, I don't know. Okay. So the company is called Energy Bit Spirulina Tablet. So it's just spirulina. It's one ingredient and it's algae. So they compress it and they make it into these little tiny tablets and you can put them in a salad. You can chew them. You can just swallow them, but there's these little green tablets. So I like to think, you know, they did the work. Like they took the algae out of the ocean and they made it into these. And I don't know, you know, also nobody's wrong. If you believe something, then it's your truth. So I, I'm going to stick with this lease system because it's serving me. It's helpful to have these little, um, these little hacks and these little things that I can use when I feel like I need a little bit more nutrients. You know, there's something I could say. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to I'm going to take the better path. I'm not going to say it. Brianna, what? you're going to say something nice. I'm sure. <laughs> Brianna, say wanna, something nice. I want to hear it, please. No, you don't. But I was gonna say just because okay, please in the comments, please let me know if I'm not the only one, because it's a little funny. But I took like the biotin and for my hair, skin, and nails, and I started noticing my mustache started growing more. And I'm like, what? No. <laughs> no joke. Ever since oh my God. Ev this is embarrassing, but it is what it is. Ever since I took biotin, I took it for years, Brianna, and it never helped my hair. But guess what? I started growing a fucking beard. I started growing little hairs on my chin, and it's been ever since. I have to pluck hairs on my chin ever since I started biotin when I was fucking 16, 17 years old. So, yeah, that's my truth. So I'm not the only one. So, okay. Biotin <laughs> so is a health different. trap. <laughs> biotin is a health trap? Okay, yeah, here's but what also I want to say. Yeah. Also, don't you think it's partially Italian or no? Yeah, probably. I just want to blame biotin creators <laughs> because of the supplement industry. Let me just say it. Let me get it out because I'm going to be thinking about it all day. Okay. Just don't take it seriously. Guys, me and Jess are sisters. You don't know this, but we are sisters. Okay. We're both Aries. So, you know, we got to, we got to be annoying. All right. Here's the thing. <laughs> Have you ever swam? Yeah. Take a deep breath. Have you ever swam in the ocean? I know you have because we've sw swam in the ocean together. Have you ever seen seaweed in the ocean and thought, ooh, I think mm, that looks good. I think I'm going to try that. Have you ever done that? Uh, I personally <laughs> have not, no. no. Like, definitely not me. I'm usually like, get that shit away from me. I don't even want to swim with it. Just think about when you are in the ocean, are you attracted to this stuff? When you go to a mango farm, if you've ever gone to a mango farm, which ugh, I have, I it was a dream. You're very attracted to that mango. You open it up and it's so that nature's telling you what to eat and what not to eat. And maybe seaweed does make you feel better and give you energy because it is extremely toxic to the human body. And what happens is, is that when you take in a toxin, it like sets off all your alarms. So your body's like, okay, we're awake. We got to get rid of this poison. I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying it's toxic to you and to, you know, if you believe it's not, but to me, I see it for what it is. It is not a human food. Seaweed. Yeah. I'll have it once in a while. I'm going to have nori wraps at our retreat because that's a treat. You know, I love seaweed. It's salty and it's delicious, but is it a health food? I don't think so personally i don't think so i think everything that is healthy for us we are easily attracted to we can easily eat it in its natural form you would never eat seaweed and jess i'm not talking to you i'm talking to the millions of billions of people out there eating seaweed you would never eat that you would never eat that in nature yes your rebuttal i <laughs> i will say i do speak for all the people out there you're representing everyone i'm i'm here for the people the people who eat spirulina like me i crave spirulina i can honestly say that and i think it's because i put it on my salads and you know you crave what you eat and but, but as you're saying you know you don't look at the it, look at it in the ocean and think mm, that looks good so i'm trying to think of like other things that i look at like I don't really look at pars parsley and think, mm, yeah, like that looks good. Or like broccoli, 
but I do crave broccoli because I eat that a lot. But when I look at it, it doesn't look appealing. But then I'm also thinking of like apple cider vinegar, then all the people that are taking that. And yeah, uh, I, yeah, I agree. I don't think we should be eating parsley or part really? or broccoli. Yeah, I don't. It's gross. I'm sorry. It's not a, yeah, that's the way I eat. And I'm not saying this is for everyone. Like, this is just the way I'm doing life and I'm experimenting and we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But I only eat things that look good, smell good, and are appealing to me in their natural form. So like, personally, I like cilantro. I really do. Some people don't because it's their DNA. Their DNA doesn't like it. So like, that's the only thing that I, I juice it sometimes. I like it. But at the end of the day, am I going to have a meal of cilantro? No. So that's one of the things that I do consume that I don't think is a health food. If you can't make a meal out of it, I don't think, I don't know if it's for us, you know? So like, I think of things like watermelon and jackfruit and mammy sapote and sour sops and cucumbers and these things that are so easy to eat, romaine lettuce, the beautiful butter lettuces. They're so easy to eat They're I like them. They're just like in nature, they're appealing. Uh, I know a lot of people watching are, are going to be like, we are not supposed to eat greens. That's controversial. We don't know. But again, I eat greens, so probably that's why I crave them. But uh, yeah, I think fruit is the only food that we're really supposed to be eating. Um, that's just my opinion. Take it or take it as you want. I'm swimming in the ocean every day, boo. And I'm not attracted to that seaweed. So that's when I stopped. That's when I stopped the Irish sea moss. I used to take them. I used to take the spirulina tablets. I used to do all that stuff especially when I first went raw, but now it's just don't make sense to me. And that's our, that's all. That's all. None of us are right. We're just speaking our truth guys. So your job in this life is to just sit and meditate and just say, okay, what makes sense to me? Journal it out, write it out, think about it because whatever makes sense to you is what you should be doing in this lifetime. Your it's real. That's real. Your intuition is real. So you've got to go with your gut. And my gut tells me no. Okay. Uh, any final thoughts, final words? That was a cool debate. Yeah. I, I, I loved it. <laughs> I'm like in the middle. I'm just all Brie, for... who won? Brie, who won? Everyone. No, just kidding. Everyone won. <laughs> I'm a kidding. really huge advocate of like, do what's best for you. So try it out. Try something. If you don't like it, then try something new. Like you're your own experiment. So do what's best for you. Last thing. No, yeah. no, no. Hold on, Jess. Do what's best for you as long as the animals are not being hurt. Yes or no? Yeah, that's for me. Uh, okay. No, because people out there, they're going to come for you, Brie. So you got to be clear. Okay. No, yes, I'm Jess, clear. you will have the final word. I was just going to say cheers to listening to your body and asking yourself what it needs. And I'm gonna take some spirulina tablets. Just <laughs> <laughs> hey, <yeah. laughs> Jess is a comedian. No joke, guys. She's one of the funniest people I've ever ever met. <laughs> uh, and the sad thing is that we're both Aries, so that's why we have you know we fight sometimes because we're sisters. We're Aries. We're very similar, and so whenever I tell Awa, me and Jess got into a little thing. She's like, "Yeah, that's your sister. You, you're supposed to get in little things." Okay. Love you guys. Th both of you guys. Thank you for being here. Thanks for joining me. Guys, if you'd like to hang out with me, Jess and Bri, Bri come to our retreat. We're doing a three-day retreat in May. I'll leave the information below. Okay, all the information is on Jessica's website, so I'll leave that link below. And she's taking more spirulina. I cannot. <laughs> she's taking extra. She took extra, Jess. <laughs> Fucking spite me. <laughs> Guys, come to the retreat. You're not only going to meet your new accountability partner, you're going to meet 10. Oh, wait. No, actually, you're going to meet 12 of your new best friends because me, Jess, and Brie, you're going to know us for life. You're going to meet nine other amazing, gorgeous women that are also interested in this kind of stuff. If you made it to the end of this video, you know you would have fun at this retreat, okay? If you didn't click off, if you actually watched the whole thing, check out the link below. And you're going to love it. It's going to be the best time of your life. We're going to the farmer's market, my favorite exotic tropical fruit farmer's market. We're going to the nude beach together. We're going to do photo shoots together. We're going to do a beauty bar together, skin, hair, massages, colonics, if you'd like, optional. We're going to do a sound bath. We're going to do yoga together. We're going to work out together. It's going to be an incredible weekend. 
So EFT, NLP, all the acronyms. Guys, guess what? We only have a few spots left. So click the link below, check it out. And we will see you guys same time, same place next week. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye, boo. Thank you.